Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be telling you my top five SharePoint design mistakes that I see people making, which could be easily corrected. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the use of poor imagery. So in this day and age, there's no excuse to be using kind of old, outdated, blurry or low resolution imagery. There's loads of places that you can be getting free stock imagery. Uh, even Microsoft have stock imagery built into SharePoint now. So actually the use of poor imagery can really make or break a site. And with SharePoint now being a very visual place, it's all built around having nice look and feel designs, different layouts. It heavily relies on good use of imagery. So let's take a look. So here's an example of some bad use of imagery. So a couple of different types of examples here. So you can see we've got this very blurry pixelated um, image and actually it's cropped off. It's supposed to say welcome, um, but it's kind of been cropped off because it hasn't quite fit uh, the right kind of size um, for this particular hero box. Um, again, here we can see like this badge um, is cut off. So it's hard to actually tell that it's an award badge. Um, something else i don't really know what you call these kind of styles of images but these kind of like sort of blob cartoony uh people i feel like they're really outdated um there's something that you sometimes see in really old kind of websites or intranets and things like that and i feel like it just makes it feel dated before it's even began uh to use certain types of imagery which have been used for a long period of time any form of kind of cartoon it's very difficult to make that feel quite modern and fresh um, so I would steer clear of kind of like little animations or clip art type of graphics um, the other thing as well here's just a little example is uh, make sure you are using royalty free imagery so having things like shutter stock or something like that sort of splattered over the top um, where it's obviously clearly that you've taken it from Google Images that's not going to look good it's not going to look high quality um, it looks like you, you're kind of cheaping out and not even um, making the effort to get sort of paid for imagery so don't have anything which has got kind of um, watermarks which are sort of over the imagery and then also things like low quality sort of photographs and things like that. So I see a lot of organizations sometimes are taking their own pictures, which is great. You should do that. But um, it should really be done by someone, a, a proper photographer, somebody who knows what they're doing with a good quality camera. If you're just taking them on an old kind of um, sort of camera or, or a low quality um sort of camera you, you're going to find that again it's just not going to give that level of um, professionalism that you want your internet to convey now with a quick change um, of imagery you can see this is the same site same site and it's the same type of thing that we're trying to actually communicate with our imagery so instead of a picture of a laptop uh, or a cartoon image we've got someone who's looking at a laptop or sitting at a laptop instead of a cartoon uh, award um, uh, uh, whatever you call them uh, badges um, we've got an actual award so like a, a glass um, award um, here and instead of an aerial picture of a, a kind of drone we've got this nice high quality picture of a drone as I say there's loads of places that you can actually find free stock imagery um, so there's a website that's called Pexels uh, P-E-X-E-L-S um, that's a really good place uh, for stock imagery that people upload um, and uh, you basically are enticed to maybe use their premium imagery but there is a lot of free stock imagery there um, that you can use but actually before you even get to the point of looking for external stock imagery I would really look to make the most out of the stock imagery that SharePoint has to offer so to do this if I just edit um, this page I'm going to edit mode and I'll just show you how quick and simple this is so say for example we wanted to change this picture of a drone to another picture of a drone uh, I can select the image click on the little pencil to edit uh, this tile, then go into background image, custom image, um, and then click on change. And then when this pops up, what we'll have on the left hand side is an area that's called stock images. So stock images is Microsoft's free stock image library, uh, which means that, that the 
populating this all the time with hundreds if not thousands of really good high quality imagery which will scale and you can use in loads of different places within your SharePoint intranet. Um, it's really good because I actually quite like the fact that you can search um, based on say colour. So say for example I was looking for something that was orange coloured, um, we can search for that. Um, you can search for things based on a uh, sort of topic or a location. So you might say an office, um, and you can find loads of imagery which um, is showing you images of offices. But in this case, I want uh, an image of a drone. So I'm just going to type in drone. Uh, and again, there'll be loads of kind of imagery that Microsoft will offer us uh, related to drones. Here we go. It's quite a nice image here, a drone. So we'll select that one. We click on insert, and that's just changed the image down here. So again, it's it's a free image. Microsoft have given it to us part of their stock image library, so we don't need to worry about kind of royalty issues. Um, it's a high resolution image, so we know it's going to scale. So if I was going to view this on a really large uh, screen, it's going to be just as high quality as if I was to be viewing on a small mobile screen as well. So the next one, which I, I feel is quite often the most common design issue in SharePoint, uh, and it's a real kind of bugbear, almost on an OCD kind of level for me, um, is alignment issues inside of SharePoint. Now, what I mean by an alignment issue is where content on the page doesn't quite visually match. Um, and over time, I've kind of learned that not everybody has kind of got this skill, or I, I suppose it might not even be a skill, it might, as I say, be more of a, a, an annoyance on my part that I can spot something and think that just doesn't look like it's sitting on the page quite right. So I'll show you an example. So I've purposely put onto this page a couple of alignment issues, um, which make me feel a little bit itchy to be honest to look at um, and I will show you how to resolve them. Um, now a lot of work has gone into this kind of template that I've, I've put together here um, which there's, there's some natural alignment that is on this kind of page um, and what I mean by that is we've got for example on this left hand side there's some uh, there's a white bar here and there's a white bar here so that's equal equal spacing we take that for granted but that is automatically there for us. But things like making sure that this slideshow, the top of it, aligns nicely to this useful links. Um, that, again, it's all out of the box. I'm not out to use any code or anything like that. But it, it works quite well to pair, pair certain web parts together. And it only comes with time and experience of building SharePoint sites um, that you'll kind of come across what kind of web parts sit well with others. But I quite like the fact that this uh, Quick Links web part sits nicely uh, with this slideshow. But the thing which is kind of annoying me a little bit is you can see that I've got one too many links on here. So actually, if I had one, two, three, four, five, six links on here, um, that would actually sit much better and look much cleaner as it would be kind of almost flush with the bottom of here. So um, if I click on this edit button, I'm going to just quickly remove this link here. And then if I click on republish, I'll then republish my page and save that for me. So now, now you can see that aligns so much better. It looks a lot cleaner. Um, we can see a little bit more of kind of the web part that's underneath it, that latest tweet. So it's kind of encouraging people to scroll down a little bit. So another kind of design top tip is if you can, um, have a little bit of kind of the, the, the content that's sat below, just slightly peeking above the kind of border of the bottom so that you can actually see that there's more content for people to scroll down and entice them to go further down the page. Some other alignment kind of issues um, that you might find is sometimes not always the bottom of the page might align properly. So there's a couple of reasons why that, that, that might be, but predominantly it's because... Um, for example, here I've got two different sections. I've got this section on the left-hand side and the section on the right-hand side, and there's more content in the right-hand side than there is the left-hand side. So there's two things that I could possibly do uh, to resolve this. Um, if I go into edit mode uh, and scroll down, one way of resolving this, uh, which to be honest won't look that great, um, but it's one way of doing it, is you can add spacing. So again, this is something not everyone's aware of. There's a web part uh, which is called Spacer, and you can use this, and you do have to play around a little bit with it, but it does tell you, it'll pop out to how many pixels you're doing, um, uh, you're growing this to. So let's try, say, 104 pixels, 
we click on republish that's going to republish our page sometimes as well just as a, a little tip refresh the page as well after republishing because uh, sometimes it does just take a couple of seconds um, for it to come through and you can see now i've got this is starting to um, go further down the page and starting to align if i added more pixels to this uh, i'm going to over egg uh, this now just to make sure that it definitely works um, but it, i would say it will need a little bit of kind of finesse to get it looking perfect so i'll just republish that again once that's republished, I'm going to refresh the page, scroll down, and now you can see, obviously, th this is not a great example because this now got a big white space. But you can see you might want to fill that white space rather than with a, a blank space. It could be another web part or something like that. What I'm saying is if you didn't want to get rid of, say, one of these additional videos um, and you wanted this to align, you could add more space or more web parts. The other option, if I didn't want to just add blank white space, because obviously that is way too much and just looks weird, um, I, I would probably have to sacrifice one of the pieces of content on here. So if I deleted one of my... Uh, embed videos and then click on republish you can then see the bottom of the page aligns much nicer now so there's no kind of bleeding space across the bottom there's no big space in between web parts or anything like that um, that's all essentially just ready to go so in summary when it comes to alignment issues um, it's a, it is a little bit about having a play around, seeing what works. As I say, it takes years of experience to kind of figure out which web parts play nice. Not everything is going to always 100% align, and sometimes you do have to make uh, a decision between alignment and aesthetics um, compared to the functionality of the page. So, as I say, my example uh, at the beginning was related to the quick uh, links uh, across the top some people they might not be able to shorten it down to six links they, they might actually have a lot more i've seen some organizations that can't get below 10 quick links um, on their, their home page um and then it, it kind of starts looking a little bit like a scrolling list and things like that so you have to play that a little bit um by year to figure out what's the best sweet spot for your navigation so we're about halfway through um, and just a quick reminder, um, if you're enjoying this video, please like uh, and subscribe to my channel for future um, videos. Use the alert um, button as well to be notified when new content is released on a weekly basis. Um, also, if you've got any questions or thoughts, um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments feed below. Let me know uh, any other design tips you might have or any design things that you might be struggling with. Um, as you'll have seen from my comment feed, I'm quite responsive, so I'm always here to answer any questions you've got uh, if you want to use the comments box below. But let's talk about the next design mistake. So you might have already spotted this from the, the last example, um, and hopefully you did with a keen eye. Um, but it's about long navigation bars. Again, this is another little bugbear for me because from a user experience point of view, it, it's just really not useful to have a really long navigation bar because it takes time for people to actually digest what they're seeing on a page. So that means it's going to slow them down finding the content that they want to find. So in an ideal world, I would suggest that you have no more than five headers across the top of your navigation. And this rule, I suppose, would apply to both the hub navigation bar as the site navigation bar as well. So let's take a look at an example. So as I say, you might have spotted from the previous example that this navigation bar up here is out of control. There's way too many navigational links across the top up here, um, and it's just it's never going to be easy for someone to be able to read all these different things and figure out what's what. So as I say, we want to try and consolidate these into potentially maybe just five um, links. So to do this, I'm going to click on the edit button, and you can see here um, we've got these drop downs. So for example, where we've got departments, you can see we can actually have up to three levels in this navigation. So we've got departments, we've got finance, we've got expense requests. So that's actually um, shown here in the way that there's kind of like an indentation of finance underneath departments and an expense request uh, underneath finance. So you can see that's how it's tiered. So for example, these links down here, they might all sit quite well underneath, uh, for example, a, a header that's called apps. So I might just click on this 
as add a new label call this apps click on ok um, i just need to click on promote the sublink because i need to move it to the very top but then all these other links that sit underneath it i'm just going to click on the three dots and say make sublink as that's going to make it a sublink which is going to sit underneath apps so that means then when i click on save in a moment all of these different links are going to appear as drop down links underneath apps so if i click on save that's then shorten my navigation right down I hover over it and then I can see these apps. So that's much easier for people to actually find the content. Um, and it's a lot less demanding on the eye when you first load up the page. As I say, you can take it further by having um, drop downs underneath it. Um, because you've probably heard this concept before that people don't want to click more than three times to find content. Um, and actually, this will break this down much quicker so say for example i'm just looking for expense request information i could go into departments i could find finance go into expense requests so it's actually taken out two layers two clicks essentially from my process of going and finding my expense requests so the next design mistake to make in sharepoint uh, in my opinion is around embedding content into sharepoint from third parties now there's some great ways of embedding, um, using embed feeds, using SPFX web parts, custom integrations, uh, even Power Apps will embed into SharePoint natively. Um, but there are some pretty poor examples of how embedding has been used instead of SharePoint. Um, so I'm going to show you an example of something similar to what I've recently seen uh, on, on an intranet. So if you're not familiar with embedding, what I mean is it's taking a third party website or app and displaying that within a SharePoint page. Now, things like YouTube or Twitter natively integrate into SharePoint through their own web parts. Whereas if you were trying to get a third party website to display, um, you would need to use the embed web part to do that. Now you can just, um, uh, use uh, some links will just work and embed straight away like a copy and paste of URL from a SharePoint page for example um, whereas some things might need a full HTML embed um, piece of code but essentially this is an example of something I saw recently where someone was trying to get a calendar to display in a SharePoint page they embedded it into a page like this and then you just got these horrible scroll bars um, which you couldn't properly see the full calendar anyway you had to kind of scroll in and out and things like that and I just thought you know what this just doesn't look great it's not a great user experience I understand how they got to this position that they wanted to be able to make sure that people could easily see the events and see the calendar um, without having to leave the page. But in reality, I think the, the better outcome was um, as part of the page. Instead, um, they use, for example, like a call to action web part, which says learn more about these events and then has a button when you click on it that takes you directly to the events calendar on one full page. There's no scroll bars and you can just get access to it here. Um, and that was a much easier way um, for them to, to, to use the site rather than having this kind of awkward kind of embed onto the page. As I say, there's time and a place for embeds. I'm not saying completely don't use embedding, but it is definitely one of those things that you need to be considering is, is it adding to the user experience or is it making the overall design a bit clunky and not fitting right with the overall look and feel? So, the next design mistake I want to talk about is the use of background colors. So the use of background colors um, is something that you can use through what we call sections in a SharePoint page. But again, it's one of these kind of areas or a kind of top tip that people just aren't aware of um, that they can make use of the page. Um, now, section colors is really useful because it will break out the content of a page. So um, it, it's easily distinguishable um, when you're kind of moving through different pieces of content that although it's all part of the same page and the same theme and category of information that it's almost subdivisional areas of content so let's take a look so this is my finance site and you can see I'm not using any background colors here um, but there are different types of content that I'm using um, throughout 
um, this. So you can see across the top bar, bar here, this is almost like the welcome kind of information. Then as we scroll down, it's a little bit about departments information, links re relate to that department, leadership, people, vision, things like that. Then we go into sort of useful kind of content, which we're offering up to other people um, that are coming to the site. So things like events, which are coming up, documents, things like that. So subtly we want to show people that actually these are different types of content and we want to break this out a little bit so what we're going to do is change the section colors in the background to do this we'll click on the edit button across the top right corner to put us into edit mode and now you can see the page is made up of these multiple sections so this area is one section this area is one section this area is one section so if i select a section I can see I've got this edit section button on the left hand side and then we can see some colors here. Now these colors are specified by your color palette. So typically organizations would have a single kind of color um, that they use as their primary color, but there could be a mix of different colors. But the long story short is that within here you can specify um, different sort of colors that you can then use throughout your color palette. So it might be, say, for example, this top bar, I want to make a solid green color to really make it stand out when you land on this page. Then on the next area, I might have it as this kind of more neutral grayish color to show the sections changed again. And this block, I might have this lighter green color. Or actually, I think a white looks better because sometimes you find with web parts, like a documents one, um, it kind of has this kind of its own sort of border areas and can kind of look a little bit odd so i'll put this as white and actually if i scroll down further i have got a news area so maybe i'll make that the gray color um, and then you can see i've got this kind of q a sections so the q a's i've just been putting into this light green color um, and they are expandable sections which means that you can sort of show and hide them by clicking on these little arrows here to enable that for a section all you need to do by the way is to click on this make uh, this section collapsible and that will just actually give it that kind of a little area here you can choose whether it's automatically expanded or whether it's collapsed by default and you can choose where the arrow sits on the left or the right hand side uh, and also you've got this option of having a divider um, to put a little divider in between each of these different sections uh, but it's a great way of building a little FAQ but if you want more information on that I do actually have a separate video all about SharePoint FAQs as well but long story short having these different section colors now so if i just republish this page um, it makes it much easier when people land on this page to actually distinguish there's different content so as you're scrolling through you can kind of see there's different content on the page uh, and this is actually all um, part of design that's kind of come in over the past kind of decade where previously the it was always kind of um design was kind of have all the content on one page to try and avoid scrolling whereas actually over the years it's kind of evolved actually a lot of people now uh, are building websites internet portals things like that where most of the content you're looking for is on one page um, and it's all about scrolling and people are comfortable with scrolling now i think it comes from a lot more people using mobile devices and things like that so scrolling um, is a lot more um, part of the user experience um, but to make it easier as part of the scrolling um, um, having these colored background sections makes it easier to distinguish the different types of content. So I hope you enjoyed that video all about SharePoint design mistakes. Uh, if you did, please like the video, uh, subscribe to my channel and enable the alerts to be alerted for uh, future SharePoint design uh, related tips. Um, if you've got any thoughts, comments, questions, anything like that, put them in the comments box below. Um, and I'll do my best to respond to everybody that uses that comment box. Thank you very much for your time watching this video.